The time has finally come. The final verdict on low carbohydrate diets effect on your blood cholesterol levels. I've spent the last two months reading 13 studies of which I've made individual videos for every single one of these studies. If you're interested in the more detailed look, well, they'll all be linked for you. On top of that, I reviewed a meta-analysis consisting of over 100 studies. So in this video, I'm going to put it all together for you, showing you all of the trends in the data, some of the nuances in interpretation, splitting things between men and women, explanations of the physiology, and you will walk away with a distinct answer to the question, will a low carb diet affect my blood cholesterol levels, as well as why. Learn your body, a science-based education. Since it is possible more data can change the conclusions made from this video, please pay attention for any updated video that I'll have linked for you. So if there is one, please view that one instead. But if you don't see a notification or linked video, then this is the most current analysis. Before we dive into the data, if you aren't familiar with what cholesterol is, it's important for you to understand. Well, otherwise, there might be some incorrect assumptions made. So dietary cholesterol and blood cholesterol are two different things. Dietary cholesterol is a molecule that, well, we can either consume from our diet, hence the name, or it can be created by our liver. Now, cholesterol is important for the generation of hormones, but also plays a role in our cell membranes, acting as an anchor to stabilize the cell membrane. It has its uses and is a necessary part of our biology. So blood cholesterol, on the other hand, is really a particle that can contain dietary cholesterol. It is primarily produced by the liver, but it can also be generated in other areas of the body. These cholesterol particles or packages come in different shapes and sizes, some being larger and smaller, as well as being more dense or less dense. Now, low-density lipoprotein is a type of cholesterol particle or package that circulates through the bloodstream and delivers dietary cholesterol, along with other molecules, to the various tissues of the body. High-density lipoprotein is also a type of cholesterol particle or package that circulates from the tissues and delivers dietary cholesterol back to the liver. Now, there is some crossover, but generally this holds true. There are also other types of cholesterol particles like very low density lipoproteins and intermediate density lipoproteins, but we'll be focusing on the two mentioned before. Okay, while that isn't a comprehensive education on cholesterol, I hope this gives you a rough idea of how this system works and why we need cholesterol. All right, let's begin with total cholesterol. The combination of LDL, or low-density lipoprotein, and HDL, or high-density lipoprotein, across all the studies mentioned not discriminating between men and women, eight studies showed an increase in total cholesterol when people were placed on a low-carbohydrate diet, meaning they consumed less than 10% carbohydrates and a majority dietary fat for the totality of their nutrition. Now, what's the deal with the other studies? Well, some of the studies showed a mixture in the results, showing either no change in total cholesterol or even a decrease. There are two likely reasons for this discrepancy in the study results, but we'll address those in a minute. First, let's discuss LDL and HDL cholesterol, as well as the differences between men and women. Focusing in on LDL, low-density lipoprotein, there are seven studies that show an increase in LDL, with the remaining studies either showing no change or a decline, with one study not measuring it at all. Interestingly, this was not the case for HDL, high-density lipoprotein, which showed either an increase or no difference in every single study. So if we separate out the data from men and women, for women, we see mostly increases in total LDL and HDL cholesterol. There's more ambiguity for men with some studies showing an increase and others showing a decrease, except in measures of HDL, which either show no change or an increase. The same as with the mixed studies using both men and women. Now, all of this data is based on the 13 studies, but incorporating the meta-analyses, which consist of analyses of over 100 studies, 
and extend to measures as far out as two years, there is a consistent increase in blood cholesterol if that's measured by LDL or HDL. So this is convincing evidence, but before we slap a final conclusion to all this, we should still consider the studies that showed a different result. I mentioned there may be two important factors that will make a difference in overall interpretation. Now, the first is the type of dietary fat used by the subjects of these studies. Consistently, if people used a low carbohydrate diet that was high in saturated fat, there was almost always an increase in all forms of cholesterol particle. Concurrently, studies that encouraged or forced participants to focus almost completely on unsaturated fat as the dominant dietary fat showed consistent decreases in total and LDL cholesterol, while still showing increases in HDL cholesterol. However, there were exceptions to that rule, which is where we introduce the second variable. The second variable is weight loss because all studies wherein the participants experienced substantial weight loss, usually double digit kilograms, there was a reduction in total and LDL cholesterol, regardless of the dominant dietary fat type, saturated or unsaturated. However, studies that showed mild weight loss, only you know a kilogram or two, still showed elevations in total and LDL cholesterol with the high saturated fat consumption conditions. Short-term studies and long-term studies that try to match the composition of the diets, except for the composition of dietary fat as saturated or unsaturated, showed differential effects, meaning the saturated fat-consuming groups always had increased cholesterol, and the unsaturated fat always had decreased cholesterol relative to saturated. Now, it might be of interest to know why the results landed the way that they did. What physiological explanations were offered by the researchers of all of these studies? Well, blood cholesterol is sensed by the liver through cholesterol receptors that are found on the surface of the liver cells that attach to the cholesterol particles in the blood and internalize these particles. This leads to an adaptation in the liver because remember, the liver produces these cholesterol particles. So if there are too many blood cholesterol particles, the liver will sense this through its cholesterol receptors and reduce its own production as well as dump more in bile, which is then excreted. Now, why am I telling you all this? Well, the researchers posit that saturated fat decreases the expression of these cholesterol receptors in liver. So with fewer of these receptors sensing the blood cholesterol levels, the liver is less able to reduce its own production and increase its excretion of cholesterol. As for the weight loss effect at reducing cholesterol, it seems probable that substantial weight loss reduces overall consumption. So even if the ratio of dietary fat may be skewed toward higher saturated fats, the overall consumption is below that needed by the body, thereby making the body an overall well, sink for the nutrients, reducing the available cholesterol and fats as fats are immediately metabolized. This is pure educated speculation on my part, but substantial weight loss seems to always drive cholesterol levels down, regardless of diet. So it seems probable that in an absolute sense, there are far fewer nutrients to have a cholesterol increasing effect. These are just a few explanations, although there are almost surely more in effect here. All in all, the body of literature across many studies indicates that a low carbohydrate diet with higher saturated fat leads to increases in total LDL and HDL cholesterol. However, a low carbohydrate diet with low saturated fat and more unsaturated fat focus lowers total and LDL cholesterols, while still promoting increases in HDL cholesterol. That said, weight loss trumps both of these effects and reduces cholesterol, save for HDL. So assuming you have concerns over blood cholesterol, either consume a low carbohydrate diet, low in saturated fat and high in unsaturated fat and or drop significant weight with it. Now, if you'd like more in-depth analyses, be sure to check out my other content looking at low carbohydrate diets on weight, blood fats, blood sugar, and so on. And with that, it's been a pleasure and thank you for your time and attention. I'll speak to you later. Bye.